All right, this is the practice ELC question number 12, and the question says, the table shows the amount of oil in liters needed to fill a cylindrical can based on the radius in centimeters of the can. The height of each can is the same, okay? And then it gives us this whole table of values here, okay? And then the question really wants to know, or is really asking us, these data are best modeled by which type of function, okay? Well, kind of one thing that we can look at before we even do this, okay, is a kind of a common differences thing and this is kind of one method that I use that I think helps people understand this really really easily okay what you can do is you can start trying to figure out what your differences is going to be between all of these values well the difference between 10 and 15 well that's just 5 okay the difference between 15 and 20 that's also 5 and then the difference between 20 and 25, that is also 5, okay? The numbers on this left side, you, wanna, you want them to be the same number, okay? And they are. So we're thinking that we're doing pretty good for ourselves right now, okay? Well, now we just need to do the same thing on this right side, okay? We first need to figure out what the difference between 2 and 4.5 is, okay? Well, the difference between 4.5 and 2 is just 2.5. Okay, well now we have to figure out what the difference between 8 and 4.5 is. Well, again, that's just basic subtraction. The difference is going to be 3.5. And now we need to figure out what the difference between 12.5 and 8 is. And the difference there is just 4.5. Well, this was our first time that we tried to find the difference and again our numbers like they were on the left they aren't the same okay so since they aren't the same we need to try to go again and see if we can figure out what the next differences would be okay well now the difference between 2.5 and 3.5 well that's just one and the difference between 3.5 and 4.5 that's also one okay well now these numbers are the same again okay and this was the second time that we tried to find the differences okay and that's when the numbers were the same well we're going to kind of use this number as an exponent this was the second time we tried to find the differences and the differences were all the same well anything to the second power is known as something squared or something that's a quadratic okay so it's raised to the second power so it can't be cubic we tried to use this first time, which is something that's linear, and our numbers weren't the same, so it can't be linear. And then we got a number here that ended up being to the second power, so we figured out that our answer here was going to be a quadratic and not a logarithmic. Oh, and just as another thing that we could add in a problem like this, just to kind of give us ourselves a little more understanding of what's going on here, you could plug each one of these types of graphs into your calculator. A cubic graph is something that's raised to the third power. A linear graph is something that's just x or to the first power. A quadratic is x raised to the second power or an x squared. And a logarithmic graph is just going to be log of x. So you can kind of plug all of these into your calculator and kind of get an idea of what each of these graphs should be doing, okay? So if you plug in or go to y equals and plug in x cubed, you're going to end up getting a graph that looks something like this, okay? If you plugged in a linear graph, linear line, you're going to end up with a graph that looks something like this or as straight as the line as I can make right now. Uh, a quadratic graph is going to look something like this, typically. And then your logarithmic graph is going to look something like this. Okay, so again, you've been given this data, and a linear graph, you can kind of look and see that your changes have to be the same. It has to be increasing at the same exact rate. Well, on this left side, again, we kind of did our changes before, and we saw that this was consistent, and we had the same number on the left. But over here, we saw that our changes were not, our changes were not the same. We ended up with something like this. So again, we knew that our rate of change wasn't consistent, so that means that it could not be a line. It was not linear, okay? With a cubic graph, 
you kind of see something here. You have negative numbers within this graph, okay? It doesn't really make sense for us to have negative amounts of oil in cans. So it doesn't really make sense for it to be this negative portion. But again, if you start looking at this positive direction, you kind of see that it starts increasing pretty rapidly here. Our numbers aren't increasing that rapidly. So we can kind of realize that our cubic one should not be correct either, okay? If you look here at this logarithmic graph, this one is really increasing very steadily, okay? So again, it's not a very rapid increase. It's actually a very kind of slow, methodical increase, okay? Well, this increase here, again, you're getting a pretty consistent increase here. So this one here is not going to be correct either. So it kind of leaves you looking at what a quadratic graph is or what a quadratic graph looks like. And again, you kind of have a consistent or a somewhat consistent increase in this positive direction here and that's kind of what you end up with so it kind of makes more sense again for your answer to be H.